Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Cheryl Selman, and welcome to The Love Code. Thank you for joining me today. This show is about providing inspiration, transformation, healing, upliftment, opening your heart, connecting more to your soul. So it's a very special show with amazing guests that are inspirational and have had amazing spiritual journeys themselves and are sharing them with us on the show. And that's really what we need in this day and age. We want to be inspired. We want to continue to expand our awareness, to wake up to who we are, and to know that anything is possible. We can heal anything. We can transform any aspect of our life. And we need the support and the reminder that that's possible. And that's what the Love Code is all about. So I'm just thrilled that you are joining me today. And if you are joining me for the first time, welcome. I hope you'll be coming back every week. If you'd like to go to my Facebook page and like me there at What Women Must Know, that's the Facebook page, What Women Must Know, I post all the archive shows on a regular basis as well as other information that I gather. You can also go to my website, which is drcherylselman.com, and opt in there, and then I can just send these shows to you in your inbox. If you are not already aware of the fact, I have actually two shows on Progressive Radio Network. So the Love Code is every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The other show is called What Women Must Know, and that's every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you like me on my Facebook page, What Women Must Know, or opt in to drcherylselman.com, then you will always get all of these shows sent to you, available to you, so you can listen to them when it's convenient and take me with you as you do your morning walk or driving to work or whatever. So, um, yeah, take advantage because they're um, great opportunities with wonderful guests that I know change my life, and I'm sure they will have the same impact on your life. Okay, so The Love Code is a show that I created to really provide inspiration for me, (laughs) first and foremost, and be able to share it with everyone out there who's part of my listening audience. Because I think in this day and age, we really need to be reminded about the truth of who we are. If you are still listening to the news on a regular basis and reading the newspaper and, uh, you know, watching television, it can really have a skewed perception of, of reality. And it's all based on fear and trauma and negativity. And that takes us so far away from the truth of our soul and who we are. So the love code is here to redirect you back home, back to who you are. And this show is all about uh, providing you with that inspiration with the many guests I have. So today we're going to be exploring what is soul healing? What is soul healing with my very special guest today, Huiling Lin, and she's an amazing woman, so let me just tell you a little bit about her. Huiling is a certified master teacher trained by Master Shi Zhang Sha. Uh, she is a certified Tao calligraphy, calligraphy Grand Master, a certified Tao Calligraphy Grand Master Practitioner, certified Tao Hands Practitioner, and a Kuan Yin Lineage Holder. Master Shah has appointed her as one of his worldwide traveling teachers in 2016. Since January 2019, she has been appointed to be one of the leading teachers in Master Shah's Tao Center in San Francisco. She is currently one of the leading coordinators of Guan Yin Lineage Holder Training Program. In addition, she is trained in Kundalini Yoga, Prenatal Yoga, Thai Massage, Reiki, Bioenergy Healing, Shamanic Healing, and holds a master's degree in urban planning from the National Taiwan University in Taipei and a PhD in interdisciplinary studies from the University of British Columbia in Canada. She is also a film editor and a Mandarin English translator. She used to serve as a traveling video film editor at Master Shaw Corps Media Team. So she's quite a woman and she is here to share with you 
her journey, understanding soul healing. Obviously, she's pa- passionate and committed to her spiritual journey. And it's a pleasure to welcome Healing Lynn to the show. So, hello and welcome. Hello, and thank you so much. It's such a great honor and joy to be on this show. I'm so excited um, today to uh, have those conversations and to connect with you and your wonderful audience and um, just share what my experience has been. Um, yeah, so, so uh, anything well, that you would like to... Well, well, we're so glad to have you. And uh, just to uh, give people a little background, uh, early, well, actually it was uh, more like November last year, I had... Master, Doctor and Master Shi Jingang, uh, Shi Jung, sorry, Shi Gang Sha on the show. And he, um, he, it was the first time I ever knew of Master Sha. And, uh, uh, it was life transforming. So I promised him after I, as his guest, attended one of his retreats, uh, actually two of his retreats in Toronto in November, and I saw the amazing work he was doing and his great mission of uplifting and transforming and healing and awakening people and what a master healer he was. I wanted to do something to support his his mission in life, his spiritual mission. And that's how this show was born. So I've been so privileged, so many of the highly qualified master teachers who go around the world teaching this work and healing, the teaching the healing and the transformational work, have been guests on my show. And uh, it's been quite enlightening to listen to them, listen to the stories and, and the message they have to share. So that's how this program came into being. And, of course, I have had many other profound spiritual teachers on the show as well, but I, I uh, always love having more of the master teachers from Master Shah come on the show because they have such amazing stories. So um, that's where I'm going to start with you today, Hui Ling. I'd like you to talk about your story. Let's just talk about you and a little bit about your personal journey. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. Um, so... Uh, I was born in Taiwan, in Taipei, and I did my uh, undergrad and my master degree in Taipei. And um, I was actually um, uh, doing my master uh, program uh, in Taiwan, um, and uh, I was very involved in women's movements and. And because I was in urban planning, so I get to um, really involve a lot of uh, housing for um, people with special needs. And that really kind of starts my um, whole different journey of connected to different group of people and recognizing that uh, how privileged I had been that many things in my life is really wasn't just my personal effort. It's a collective um, effort. There are so many services that people from different uh, level or different uh, communities that they are forming this incredible uh, resources, this network. Then it, I was just so privileged to be to grow up in the middle upper class that I get to have all those educations and all that and to be able to see uh, people from different walks of life and uh, be part of the community service. And uh, I think that was the the starting point for me to um, recognize the importance of service and pay it forward, that to recognize that my life is really not just about personal effort because I can seeing that our people are way smarter than me, work harder than me, but they didn't get to have uh, similar experience or resources I was given. And so I was really involved with different kinds of, of social movement and really reached a point that I was so burnt out. So I decided to uh, have 
something changed in my life, and it just happened. And it, everything, of course, later I understand is all in some way uh, divine arrangement, uh, synchronicities, and, and nothing just happened by accident. Because I was so overwhelmed and really like in this day of burnout that I um, decided to go on a exchange program. And at that time, the only exchange program that's available for one term um, was to go to Vancouver, the University of British Columbia. And at that time, my master th- uh, thesis was about uh, female students study overseas, whether it's a master or PhD program. I look at their uh, body language, their um, uh, their f- social experience, uh, and their personal experience in a public space in this um, cross-cultural content. Because I was in urban planning, so I studied a lot about uh, the impact and the powers of space. But it's not just a physical space, but social space, uh, political space, and many different types of spaces, how they form who we are, even shape our body language, even shape how we express or uh, present ourselves especially in the public space. It was really fascinating. And um, that one year living abroad in Vancouver started this whole journey that I did not expect. And at first it brought me back. um, After I went back to Taiwan to finish my um, thesis, and when I was in Vancouver, I met my um, supervisor, uh, who is an amazing feminist scholar. And I went to her lecture at the universities, and she had invited me to go back to UBC to be her PhD student. And she said she will support me in any way, and she's really interested in working with me. And that's really how I ended up uh, going back to do a PhD, which I did not expect at that time in my life that I would... Uh, study abroad and do a PhD in a completely different realm because I was uh, in urban planning. And uh, for my PhD, I actually turned into a, a slightly different direction. I was trained as a feminist film theorist. I look at um, female um, filmmakers, what I call them transmigrant. They're not really immigrant because immigrants are usually you move from one place to another place, and you stay in that place. Transmigrants are uh, people who migrate from places to places. There are many homes for them. So I look at all the the several uh, female transmigrant filmmakers, how they use their film as a way for social activism, um, as a, a tool for change um, for social movement or for environmental uh, benefits or for um, gender, sexualities, and racials and a different um, aspect that is important for them. And it was really amazing. And it's also really, really empowering and inspiring. It's really opened up a different aspect of uh, the world to me. But that's really one part of the my experience in when I was doing my PhD at UBC. Um, what really had turned my life completely to a, really like upside down to a different uh, level is uh, I start um, actually from the intention I wanted to find something to balance my life because it's really stressful to study in the academic um, field when you didn't have that all English environment when you're young because I, I pretty much start this all English environment from my PhD because I did my master in, in Taiwan 
And I had no idea how difficult it is that just the language itself it was very, very challenging. And of course, the language is not just about language. There's so many um, expressions and representation that is uh, part of every aspect of our life. So, for example, I, I would not have those cultural reference that my friends would talk about. Uh, and it's, an, and it's not just about English. It's be, just because I did not grow up in that cultural content. So there will be some of the things that it's not even an insider joke. It just, if you are not part of, you didn't have that experience growing up, readings or watching or listening to those things, you would not be able to get it. So there were different type of barriers that I was a, that I was aware of, and and all of that um, it create a um, they become like a source of stress. It on top of all the deadlines of papers and and scholarship and teachings and all of those things and. So I started and wanted to learn something to help me to balance my stress. And so then um, through synchronicity that um, met people on campus who does study on plant medicines and um, and end up connect to a whole different type of community. I end up have a um friends that invite me to go to shamanic ceremony and met with up um and sometimes even on the ferry um, with native elders or end up going to uh, invite to native um what we call the first nations elders medicine ceremonies and it just opened up a whole different dimension of my world to me. I realized, oh my God, that there is this another round that, or many rounds that I had no idea. It's re- it was really humbling. And one thing that I learned from my PhD work is, the more I study, the more I realize how little I know. And that's a similar experience when I uh, start to tap into the spirit world. Uh, to learn about energy work, to learn about the shamanic work, learn about the plant medicines. And all that was really powerful. And I realized also um, it's amazing and very powerful to go to any of those ceremonies. But what's really is the real ceremony is after you left those ceremonial space, how do you bring those things back in your, your everyday life? So I wanted to learn something that would help me to uh, have a regular daily practice. And that's how I ended up learning Kundalini Yoga and be- end up become a Kundalini Yoga teacher. All of this, um, and then the later energy medicine, all of this, it things all prepared me to uh, meet Master Shah. But of course, at that time, I had no idea. I was just so blessed to live in Vancouver. There's so many spiritual teachers come uh, with theirs, and it's so easy to go to workshops and retreats, and um, they're just so accessible. And what really had to start my journey with Master Shah was um, my dad uh, was very, very ill. And it was like it just happened, and... Nobody knows what happened. So my mom took my dad to all kinds of hospital or church or temple, the Buddha temple, Dharma temple, everywhere that people said, this is really work. Okay, because at that time, they were so desperate that they would try everything. And what my dad experienced was that he just suddenly could not eat and could not even drink water. Even drinking water, he would have this extreme uh, pain in his abdominal. And so he was also in the, in the hospital, um, doing all kinds of checkups. There's no cancer, there's no tumors, there's nothing. But they keep him in the hospital, but they couldn't find anything. 
and at the same time, um, uh, I, I started this learning um, healing journey, just learned about healings. and Because prior to that, my mom was also very sick, and she has had the heart condition um, throughout her, her, her whole life. But in her um, 70s, there was a, uh incident that she was really... Um, like dying, basically, the doctor said, if you have anyone you want to see, you better call them. And that's also another um, reason why I started to get interested in learning healing at that time. On top of that reason, wanted to learn how to balance the stress. Because when I went back to visit my mom, I was in the hospital with her, and I see actually a lot of young people were very sick in the hospital. And I realized that I can no longer to always thinking, well, I'm young and I can, if I do, let's just stay up for this another day or another couple of days to get things done. I realized that I had taken this physical body for granted and I had to really take care of my emotional and mental body. And, uh, so all of this is just kind of happening, um, in the, the in the way that um, it, it's like there is a, a path already in front of me, but I didn't see it because at that time I was still very stressed with the school and, um, and with the work and campus and and all that. And so uh, I so I start the, this healing journey, learning about healing. So I know some of the healers and all that, um, but I wasn't really fully commit and and it's still in just in a state of just being curious and not really commit like or thinking this is going to be my past and until then my dad because this was like so unusual and and for eight months nobody know what happened to him and my dad lost uh, more than a hundred pounds and he used to be a big man and then he ended up um, become skinnier than me and yet nobody can help him. So through a synchronicity that um, uh, my dad used to teach at university in Taiwan, and he was on sick leave, and he met someone just in the neighborhood and told him that, oh, you're an English professor. You know, I have been studying with this teacher who have published this book. Maybe you'd be interested to read it and maybe you, you will one day translate the book. And so um, my dad took the book. Of course, he didn't read it. <laughs> and he just put it on the table. And a couple of days later, my mom also had a, a fall and she injured her ankle. And her friend told her, you have to go see this guy. He's a really amazing full massage therapist, and and my mom's like, no, I'm afraid of pain, and I don't want those full massages are usually very painful. And her friend said, no, this guy is very different. He does this full massage; it's very light but very effective. So eventually, my mom went because it was just like two blocks from their place, and my mom had a great experience and was talking to this person, and this person then found out that her husband is an English professor, so gave her a book. <laughs> And it turned out that they had met the same person. And so we had like two of the same book at home in the living room. <laughs> and that's how I was already living in Vancouver. And and my sister uh, called me and said, you know, just suddenly she said, you know, it's very strange. Now both mom and dad met this person. And they were talking about uh, this teacher, Master Shah. And have you heard about him? And I said, no. And my sister was like, but... You've been learning this healings and, you know, for a while, how come you don't know this person? And normally they do not care about anything I learn because they, they don't think it's very valuable. Why are you learning some energy healings or plant medicine? It's just like, to them, it's kind of nonsense. <laughs> so it was very strange. My sister keep asking me, how come you don't know uh, Master Shaw? And I said, well, I just never heard about him. And so eventually... Uh, I, I told her, I said, okay, I will look into that. And so I asked her, what is the book? And she said, well, it's the, it's the book called The Power of Soul. So and when I seem to remember that I went to another friend's a party and noticed there was a book 
on the bookshelf, and it was the Power of Soul. So I thought, wow, there must be something about this book. I should probably look into that. So I Googled it, and then I found out Master Shah was in Vancouver and just left. So I thought, okay, you know, it's not meant to be. And at the time I was teaching on campus, um, I was teaching a phone courses, so I could not travel. So I thought, okay, I just wait. And then it, it happened because I was part of um, the uh, employees on campus, so we belong to this union a mailing list. So someone uh, sent out an email and said, you know, I want to create a healing group on campus. And I was like, oh, my God, this has been what I want to do. You know, I would talk about meditation, yogas, and all of these different things with my students in film class because I felt that um, I wish I had a teacher teach me something different when I was at university. And I told the student, all of the film theory things, I will still give you information, but I'm sure you all know and you can all do better research than me. You know, young people, they're really great at those things. So I told them I want to share something that really helped me, that really make a difference in my life with you. And so I told them, if you are okay with that, every time I would spend 15 to a half hour share about those things before we start the actual film class. <laughs> The student would actually really love it. And I just felt like, okay, if the university is going to fire me, then they will fire me. I <laughs> want to teach something that resonates with my heart. And so anyway, long story short, I was so excited that this woman had sent this email. So, of course, I went to the gallery. And then at first she just talked about, well, she's, you know, the importance of healings, and she felt it was important for academic uh environment to have the presence of this type of healing. And by the end of this gathering, she said, oh, and by the way, I've been studying with this teacher since like late 90s, and his name is Master Shah. And I was like, wow, I really meant to be Master Shah, because how could this possible all happen in such a short time, all direct to this um, teacher, Master Shah? And then she said, well, actually, my teacher is actually going to come back and um, he just left, but he's going to come back in next month. And he's going to give a, a workshop on campus. And I was like, wow, my goodness, not only I didn't need to travel, Master <laughs> Shah is coming to the campus. <laughs> I didn't even have to go somewhere. I lived on campus at that time. And because this all happened at the same time when my dad was sick, so I went and Master Shah offered uh, special blessings. And... Uh, for some reason, you know, even though I didn't really know who Master Shah is, I, for some reason I just felt that I had to do it, and which I, I did. And, and of course, I didn't tell my mom, I didn't tell my sister, because I thought they were going to uh, think I, I am, you know, it's just, again, um, had no clue what is going on and then do things that I don't even know. And, of course, I always feel like I know what I'm doing, but from their perspective, I, you know, I see what they're saying. So I didn't tell them, but and then there's a 16-hour time difference. So Master Shah, and, and there was a, a little piece of a story that I, I should share. So Master Shah actually personally did reading for all the participants. It was a small group, and... Nobody in that group knew me at that time. I was like a brand new person there. And Master Shah looked at me and he said, um, there's something is heavy in your ancestral side, on your father's side, that your dad must be ill. I was so blown away. <laughs> and I was like, I do not know who this Master Shah is, but how could it possibly know this? So that was that also that piece that I felt like, it doesn't matter what the cause it is. Um, if Master Shah is real, then I can save my dad. And that's what, uh, it's like I just had no doubt that this is what I'm going to do. And so, which I did. And it's a remote healing. Master Shah had no idea who my dad is, I, you know. And in the morning, so Master Shah gave the healing in the afternoon and the next day in the morning, 
because there's 16 hours difference in between Vancouver and Taiwan at that time. And then my sister called me and said, I don't know what you did, but dad asked for uh, eating a rice soup, and which he has not asked to eat anything because every time he eats something, he will have extreme pain. And she said, not only he felt hungry and he wanted to eat something and he ate a whole bowl and he's totally fine and then it has been a couple hours. So I was like, okay, again, I don't know who this Master Shah is, but I'm going to study with this Master Shah. So I sign up for everything that Master Shah has offered, mm-hmm. and including the one that he was going to come back to offer in Vancouver a couple months later. And that um, was the beginning of my journey with the Master Shah. And then, um, so my dad started to have an incredible improvement. And that was um, February, and in March, Master Shah went to Taiwan uh, because Master Zhang, the composer, lives in Taiwan, and he went there to record CD. So I told Master uh, Shah, I said, is it possible uh, if Master Shah is doing some public healing, can my parents go to see him? And then it happened, Master Shah was doing some um, public healing, so my parents went to see him. And my dad, at that time, he was on a wheelchair because he could not eat and he could not drink. He was on IV for eight months. So his muscle was all weak. So he had to, if he had to leave the hospital or go to the bathroom, he had to be on the wheelchair. So my dad went to see Master Shah's and Master Shah gave my dad further healing. And in two weeks time, my dad had to go back to the hospital for a further checkup. And he literally walked back to the hospital. And the doctor at that time that was assigned to um, treat him uh, was a group of cancer doctors. And one of them is a young female doctor. And she specialized in liver and kidney cancer. And she was like so blown away. She said, like, what happened? How you not only look normal and you can walk and it's like there's nothing that happened to you for that last eight months. So, you know, my parents told her about Master Shah, and this doctor ended up, uh, went to study uh, at that particular event Master Shah offered and received the Divine Healing Hand, which is the previous style hand. And so mm-hmm. that was the first, um, the healing miracles that I experienced my family. Well, can I can I just interrupt? Can I interrupt? I want, I want yeah. to ask you. So so your so your dad literally had some unknown condition that stopped him at, be, from eating or drinking because he was in pain. So you, your father literally was dying slowly of starvation. Really, I mean, if you look at that condition, and, and he was just withering away. Right? There was nothing anyone right. could do, and he could hardly keep anything down. Um, and no one knew what was going on, and uh, obviously, you know, the atrophy that happened, so, he, you know, he couldn't walk uh, on his own. So the first healing that, Mas- that that he received remotely, you were in Vancouver, Master Shah was in Vancouver, Master Shah did the healing remotely, because it's not about time and space, where healing happens is beyond time and space, and your father immediately, when that happened, was was able to start eating again, so that was the beginning of his healing journey. Right, and um, and then and then and then down the track, he was uh, with further healing from Master Shah. He was able to recover his ability to to walk and to, I would imagine, have more, uh, have a normal life. So was he diagnosed with a cancer? Or he went. You said he went to a cancer cancer specialist. Did he actually have a cancer? No, um, they couldn't find any tumor or any normal growth. It just, it, because it's so mysterious, they think it must be very right. serious. So it had to be treated by serious cancer doctors. <laughs> but the doctor has no but, idea what happened. Well, so so what did Master Shaw say was happening to your dad? So, um, uh Actually, prior to that, um, my sister and my mom was uh, you know, telling me about my dad, and they were asking, you know, well, you've been learning all of this, and 
you have any idea. So at that time, um, my spiritual channels started to open up because I was going to all of those, um, the native elders, the healings, um, ceremonies, and um, and also I was doing Kundalini Yoga and the meditations. Um, it wasn't really my original intention to open the spiritual channel, but all of this somehow combined together that opened my spiritual channel. And so I would see a lot of Thera images and sometimes we receive messages during my meditation. And I thought it was just normal that this is what happened to people who meditate. And so I told my mom, I said, okay, I will ask Guan Yin. I will ask the Confession Buddha because we have a very close connection with Guan Yin. So I said, okay, I, you know, Guan Yin often come to give me messages. So I will ask Guan Yin. So I told my mom that, okay, so Guan Yin told um, me that uh, the condition with that is really related to the Shen Jing blockages, the karma. And Guan Yin showed me in what happened in that one uh, lifetime, what happened to my dad and the things my dad did. So I told my mom about this. And my mom actually, she has a also very open channel since she was young. But because all of this, you know, um, pressure from outside, people do not believe it and think that she's not normal and her channel started to close it. So when I told her that, she's like, it sounds like nonsense to me. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know. You asked me and I asked Guan That's what I heard and this is what I share with you. And she didn't believe me. And uh, then um, my mom met someone um, who also have a very open channel and told her a very similar version of what she saw. Again, it's a stranger that does not know our family. And that person, that woman also told my mom that your husband is ill. And this is because of karma. And so um, my mom started to believe me a little bit at that time. It's like, okay, maybe there are some things that, that open up that you're able to connect to the, the different realms. And so I knew that that's why when Master Shah was offering that um, karma cleansing at that time, he was still offering it. Then he stopped. Then I knew that that's what my dad needs. It's those um, Shen Shijun blockages is making him sick. So and, can we, can we, for people who are listening and don't uh-huh. understand what you're, uh, you know, these terms, when you should say, uh, 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 Shen Shi Jing blockages and karma. Let's talk a little bit about that, so people can have right. an understanding from a from a uh, a different perspective. And this is very much rooted in traditional Chinese medicine and metaphysics. Um, the, their understanding, their perspective of uh, levels of healing and and things that impair the body's ability to have energy flow. So let's, can we just talk a little bit about mm-hmm. what all that means? Right. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so the Shen Shi Jing uh, blockage is literally, so Shen Shi Jing is uh, ancient wisdom. It's also a universal law. It basically means uh, the soul, heart, mind, and body. Um, so the Shen Shi Jing blockages literally means uh, the blockages in our energy and our matter, the body and our soul, heart and mind. And why do we have this kind of soul, heart, mind, body blockages? It's from uh, ancient Chinese and also Buddhist uh, tradition and this belief that uh, we have those uh, due to our previous actions. And so the term karma basically is cause and effect. Karma is a record of all the, um, our actions, our speech, our thoughts, and which include a good karma and the negative karma. Good karma is when we do good service, when we make uh, people happier and healthier, is when we do selfless services, like what you're doing with your work, that you're serving and you're bringing all this in very empowering information um, to people and to empower your listener, to empower your 
、uh, client to patient, this is a, a good service, and this then you accumulate good karma. But there are also a lifetime that we might have made mistake that bring、uh, cause some sufferings or pain to others, whether it's their physical life or their soul journey, might have affect their、um, soul journey to progress on their soul journey.、Uh, and sometimes this is also not from our own personal, but from our ancestors. And、uh, this can either create The positive karma or、uh, create a negative karma, and when we have a negative karma, the result is we will we have the shen qi jing blockages, the soul heart mind and blockages, and it either manifests in、um, disease or discomfort in physical level or imbalance emotional and mental state or.、Um, In our relationship, in our finances, in our work, all different things that in, it could manifest in any aspect of our life really depends on what are the lessons that we、uh, need to learn. And、uh, karma is considered as a universal law in this realm, what we call the Yin Yang world, which is this Mother Earth that we are living in. And so, basically,、um, I always consider this as one of the greatest、uh, gift for love that God or heaven or Buddha, whatever we call the higher source, has for us. That it's not meant to punish us in any way, but it helps us to learn the lessons so that we can move forward on our soul journey. Because. Of course, physical life is very precious, but physical life is limited. But our soul journey is eternal. Our soul continues to evolve and learn and grow, and it is our soul desire to be uplifted and to grow、um, into the fullest and highest capacity. And ultimately, that's the Buddha journey. That's the Tao journey. So, this is.、Uh, I'm just going to jump in here, Huiling, because it's so fascinating. It's it's uh, uh, for most Westerners, those from this tradition. I have to say, it's you know, it's not something that we have as part of our cultural constructs. We don't really, we don't even for you know. Most people in, in Western cultures, so certainly in the United States, you know, you can go back three generations and remember your great grandparents are lucky. I mean, I,、uh, you know, for me, I can kind of have a bit of a story of my great grandparents, but or my great grandmother anyway. I don't even know about my great grandfather. I mean, that's as far back as we go, you know, if we're lucky. But、um, in in the you know Chinese tradition and Asian traditions and many other traditions, I mean ancestors play a huge role in the understanding of who we are and what we're dealing with.、So、we're dealing with who we are in this lifetime, how we are, our physical health, what we're doing, our thought process. We think it's all about what's happening now. You know, maybe we go back as far as our birth. That that you know that could be an influence. But that's as far as back as most Westerners construct cultural construct takes us. But the fact is that isn't the whole truth. There is more going on, and there are more influences. And and I. I I, I can recognize this because doing what is called nutrigenomics. So we look at in my work, I can do a test, and we look at the gene, like the software glitches you inherited. All right. So we look at, and that came from the influences of what your parents were exposed to, and environmentally, nutritionally, and it goes back to maybe grand. I mean, it goes all the way back, but certainly we can go back. Say grandparents and what your parents, and then what you've inherited. And the research is also saying, but there are emotional impacts. The emotional state of your parents and even your grandparents have an impact on your gene expression now. So we're starting to open our our world view, so to speak, and understand that there are influences beyond this space and time. 
that can go back in time, that can be ancestral, so to speak. So it's like slowly creeping in to our, our, our cultural model of the world that there are influences beyond just what we've experienced here, which has always been a part of more traditional cultures, probably all traditional cultures around the world, Certainly in my experience in doing working with shamans in South America, Central America, um, in, in Australia, uh, you know, Native American, I mean, they all understand the role of an, the ancestors and working with the ancestral energy. It's very foreign to Westerners, but it's a, it's a reality. And what you were saying, your father had this unexplained, debilitating, life-threatening condition because of some karma, something that he had carried forth in this lifetime that was initiated by an action in a past lifetime that he had not resolved. But he, I don't even know, you know, I don't know the situation, so I can't say anything other than he, it was still an energy that was unfinished that he brought into this lifetime. But is that does that sound correct to you? Yeah, and that's what is so fascinating that you know when we um, expand our view or awareness of this ancestral line or the, what people call the bloodline, it brings also the understanding of oneness to a different level. When we we right now most people accept and recognize that we're all connected, that we're connected to nature, and this is why. To do anything that's beneficial for the environment is one of the most selfish things we can do as a human being. But this is more a horizontal um, direction. But when we um, bring this ancestral concept in, like what you share with the gene, and that's bringing the oneness into a vertical direction, that we are in oneness. Yeah that is beyond space and beyond time. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, that really had changed a lot of my uh, way of life, how I relate to people, how I relate to nature, how I relate to everything in my life. When we have that uh, understanding, and it's still really hard to comprehend, but at least to have that awareness that we truly are connected, this oneness, is more than horizontal, it's a vertical, and it's even like beyond this dimension. You know, when some people are lucky enough to be able to have a glimpse or experience that, um, and sometimes through ceremony, sometimes through a really deep meditative state or um, whatever the experience they have, that is, is what is so profound. And so... I would say this is uh, uh, one of the, the things about the soul healing is that, you know, Master Shah teaches us that you heal the soul first and your mind and body will follow. So at that time, my dad was getting all type of uh, treatment, but nothing worked because the sickness, that negative information message is on the soul level. And, and this soul level is not just his soul, but his ancestral soul. So... Through Master Shah's very unique way, the soul healing, that he clear and transform that negative message into a positive one. And so that healing, I believe, it wasn't just for my dad, but for my family and for my dad's whole ancestral line. And it's really like beyond my human mind can comprehend. And uh, this is why I always feel I can not be more a gra- a gra- a grateful to Master Shah for what um, it's like I can never express enough of my gratitude to him and because that's just one healing miracle that uh, I have shared and there are many more in my family and even how I end up finish my PhD is I use the soul healing and that probably will have to be another topic another day there's opportunity it's absolutely amazing that the soul healing that we can apply in every aspect of our life. And not only, um, I would say meeting Master Shah is truly one of the biggest blessings in my life. That to meet a true teacher that only can help you to experience being the healing miracle yourself. 
which is amazing. It already is amazing. But to empower you to be able to create a healing miracle for others, and not just for your loved one, even people you don't even know who come to you for support, for help, and you're able to help them. That is like another level of, um, I don't even know what's the word you could use. Like this is probably, the, for me, it's the highest achievement in my life. Yeah, that I yeah. go to. I would say it's the greatest blessing you can receive is being able to truly yeah. support and serve others. I, you know, you've uh, obviously from your credentials, you're you know, this may not make sense to everyone, but you're this Tao calligraphy grand master teacher, not just teacher, grand master teacher. You you know, certified Tao calligraphy grand master practitioner, certified Tao hands practitioner. You you have just like taken all of these levels of 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 uh, healing gifts uh, i'm just taking you know just just gotten your phd in your spiritual journey with master shah you you know it takes a lot of commitment to achieve the levels you've achieved in mastery in these different areas of the spiritual work um so it's so impressive that you know you've you've just totally dedicated and committed yourself so here's my question to you, Weiling. If people are listening going, wow, this sounds really amazing. Yes, I need healing. I would like to be able to do more healing for others. Where would you advise people to take that first step? How would they do that? Um, so they, uh, so first of all, if they're just curious about learning more about what Master Shah is doing, we have eight global uh, centers around the world, and they can go to um Master Shah's website, the D-R-S-H-I dot com. And so they can um, visit one of our centers. And I myself, that I'm very honored now, I'm serving the Master Shah's Dell Center in San Francisco. And again, in, they can find our information on the website. And if That's there are Dr. Shaw dot com. Yes. I just want to remind, it's it's D-R for Dr. Shaw s h a dot com really simple d r shaw dot com yep go ahead yeah and they can go to a different Dow group and then that would take them to different Dow uh, centers uh, a global Dow Chang and um, if people are interested to uh, like me from um, experience healing miracle to become someone to be empowered to create a healing miracle. Then the first step is to become a Dalham practitioner. Um, and there are, again, many information that they can find in the DaoAcademy.com. Uh, okay, let me just spell that for people. Yeah, yeah good. T-A-O yeah. Yeah, Academy, Dao, or Tao, Tao, but it's also Dao, <laughs> Academy, yes. uh, dot com. T-A-O for the Tao, for the Dao. Um academy.com and and I just uh just want to share with everyone that I actually did that training and learned how to be a Tao hands practitioner and it's uh it's so powerful so powerful to have uh, a, a, an ability to transmit healing remotely because you don't even have to you don't touch anyone you just sit, you just invoke this healing energy and direct it um allow it to be received it's it's you know such a gift because there's so many people that need healing and to be able to actually have the ability to transmit healing energies is just uh, an amazing ability amazing gift so i'm very grateful to having learned that because there's nothing more uh, satisfying i guess you would say more more fulfilling than knowing you can really make a difference in someone's life and you don't have to know how to do it. You just be the channel for that energy. Right. So that's the first, uh, uh, our first level of uh, practitioners, and which is a very powerful um, practice already. And the next level is uh, the Guanyin Lineage Training Program, which is the one that I'm, again, have the honor to be assigned to be part of the leading coordinator for this program and we just had a really amazing retreat in Pataluma and Master Shah came in and gave us a seven hours of teachings of Heart Sutra um, 
So uh, more information. What, what's the purpose of the What's the purpose of the Quan Lin, uh, Quan Yin lineage training? What's What's the purpose of that? What's the the, out, um, so you know, the, the the outcome from that? Right. So um, the Quan Yin. Um, so first level is the Dao hand. Then you receive this very powerful transmission that you are able to do remote healings or in person healing. And the second level is the Guayin uh, lineage holder uh, training program. And when you be part of this program, you learn and you you have to actually learn and memorize the Dabe Jo, which is the greatest compassion mantra. And this is a, a mantra that many um, Buddhist pr- practitioners are familiar with. And then you will receive um, there are some requirements, and once you pass those requirements, including memorize and chanting the Stabe Jo, which consists of 88 lines and represent 87 Stabe Jo Buddha and Bodhisattva. And it is commonly believed that Stabe Jo has the capacity to heal 84,000 sickness in the Buddhist tradition. It's a commonly accept that. That's why uh, many monks and nuns and practitioners and Buddhist Followers, they um, chant it and memorize and share the Dabe Jo. And so when you're in this program, you will also receive, you pass all those prerequisites, you will also receive a transmission like the Dao hand. This is a thousand hand, thousand eyes, Guan Lynch or the transmission, which allows the person to offer Quan Chakra blessings and also a thousand hand, thousand eyes blessings to any aspect of her life as appropriate. And uh, this is also um, a way, a very powerful way to connect and align with Guan Yin, the Compassion Buddha. And um, Guan Yin is also well known with her um, spiritual channels and her wisdoms uh, in addition to the greatest compassion the Guan Yin, the full name is Guan Shi Yin Pusa. The short story is that uh, Guan Yin... Wait, wait, you know what? You know what? I, I'd love to hear this, but actually I just noticed we're really at the end, the very end of our show. Okay. So we're going to have to save this for another time. But, uh, you know, if people are curious, if they're drawn to it for whatever reason, you're kind of directed... In, in this direction, then go to the website drshaw.com. Yes. Lots of um, opportunities to learn. The things are freely available. If you want to learn more about the courses, like the Dow Hands Training, go to the DowAcademy.com. Then there's a lot more information there. And you know, it's 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 all about understanding that we are on a soul journey, and that uh, soul healing is the ability to really, first of all allow us to align more to who we are and then be able to to take that that channel that we are and share it and support and heal others in this world. So we're really doing the highest spiritual work, which is why we have truly incarnated. <laughs> so um, we think it's such an, an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show and the wonderful work you are doing in this world, having found your purpose and your mission in life, you're obviously dedicated to it and, and doing uh, an amazing job sharing with your knowledge around the world. So thank you so much for everything you do and for being with us today. Thank you so much also for everything you do. It's such a great honor and pleasure to be here today with you, and I'm so um, excited to have this opportunity. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome, and to all of my listeners, thank you for joining me today on The Love Code, and may your week be filled with love, peace, and happiness. Bye for now. <laughs>